Now if you fear and worship the Lord and listen to his voice, and if you do not rebel against the Lord's commands, then both you and your king will show that you recognize the Lord as your God. But if you rebel against the Lord's commands and refuse to listen to him, then his hand will be as heavy upon you as it was upon your ancestors. And then he's kind of giving them a warning that has been repeated a couple of times when significant leaders have passed the torch, essentially saying that, okay, if you all follow God and, you know, do what he wants, obey his commands, things will be good. But if you don't, it's not going to look pretty. What's up, cool people? My name is Matt. Welcome back to our Bible study. Alrighty. So, we are looking at 1 Samuel chapter 12 right now. Uh, long story short, Samuel has kind of been the main leader for a while. Um, after he, you know, served in the temple from a young age, or I guess the tabernacle, anyway. He served the priests from a young age, but then the priests got themselves in trouble, and Samuel basically took on the leadership after that, sort of in the role of a judge. Uh, that's what we'll call it, I guess. Um, but he's old at this point. Israel asked for a king. He has now anointed a king. They, they, they have someone who's set up to be the next leader. And that's when we get into this stuff here. So, uh, I guess that's all the more context that's needed. I'm going to go ahead and get rolling here with 1 Samuel chapter 12. Then Samuel addressed all Israel. I have done as you asked and given you a king. Your king is now your leader. I stand here before you, an old gray-haired man, and my sons serve you. I have served as your leader from the time I was a boy to this very day. Now testify against me in the presence of the Lord and before his anointed one. Whose ox or donkey have I stolen? Have I ever cheated any of you? Have I ever oppressed you? Have I ever taken a bribe and perverted justice? Tell me, and I will make right whatever I have done wrong. No, they replied, you have never cheated or oppressed us, and you have never taken even a single bribe. The Lord and his anointed one are my witness today, Samuel declared, that my hands are clean. Yes, he is a witness, they replied. So, this is, I guess, Samuel kind of... <laughs> passing the torch on to Saul now that it's, you know, fully established who the next leader is going to be for Israel. He's not, like, dying, per se, right now, but he's old, so he's, you know, it's, it's a reasonable enough time for the next leader to start taking the reins. Um... He does mention that his sons also serve them, but they're not going to have the same level of leadership that Samuel did. Um, and it's basically, in a way, I think he's also trying to say that, like, all right, well, I'm getting towards the end of my life. I want to make sure that I correct anything wrong that I might have done. So... Let me ask all of the people. Can you all think of anything that I've done wrong? Because if so, call it out now and I'll fix it. Okay? I want to make sure that I don't leave any, uh, you know, loose ends when I depart from my leadership role. But they're like, nope, you've been good. Nothing to report here. So, then, um, after, after that's completely established, then we get into verse 6 here. It was the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, Samuel continued. He brought your ancestors out of the land of Egypt. 
Now stand here quietly before the Lord as I remind you of all the great things the Lord has done for you and your ancestors. So we're going to get kind of a history lesson, <laughs> which uh, should be a, a reasonable enough reminder or, and even like summary of things that have happened in the Bible, seemingly at least from the time of Moses till this point. Uh, so then verse 8. When the Israelites were in Egypt and cried out to the Lord, he sent Moses and Aaron to rescue them from Egypt and to bring them into his land, into this land. But the people soon forgot about the Lord their God, so he handed them over to Sisera, the commander of Hazor's army, and also to the Philistines and to the king of Moab, who fought against them. Then they cried to the Lord again and confessed, We have sinned by turning away from the Lord and worshipping the images of Baal and Ashtoreth. But we will worship you and you alone if you will rescue us from our enemies. Then the Lord sent Gideon, Bidan, Jephthah, and Samuel to save you, and you lived in safety. All right, I'm going to pause there for a sec. Uh, more than a sec, but anyway. So, yeah, this is pretty much just a history lesson slash recap of things that had happened, you know, so far, the emphasis seems to be on the Israelites crying out to God for help, God helping them, and then they turn away, you know. Basically, the cycle that we get a lot of in the book of Judges, but expanded a little bit beyond that. And we got a bunch of footnotes here. Uh, Hebrew says when Jacob was in Egypt, but, uh, that's essentially saying the same thing because, well, it, it actually explains it right here. The names Jacob and Israel are often interchanged throughout the Old Testament, referring sometimes to the individual patriarch and sometimes to the nation. In this case, if it was saying when Jacob was in Egypt, it would be referring to the nation of Israel. Because Jacob was given a new name from God after, like, wrestling with him. So then Jacob got the name Israel from that moment. Partially because that's the meaning of the name Israel. It's dealing with, like, wrestling with God. Um... So anyway, they were in trouble in Egypt, asked for help, God helped them, but then they turned away and other people came and started ruling over them after they got into the promised land. After a while, they realized they messed up. They asked God for help. And so God brought the judges, some of which are these people here. Now, okay, Hebrew says Jeroboam instead of Gideon, but that was that was sort of a nickname for him because uh, he had actually, like, torn down a statue of Baal very shortly after God had spoken with him and said, all right, you're going to be the one to lead Israel for me. But you gotta, the first thing you gotta do is to get rid of all these idols. Um, I definitely don't recall seeing the name Bidan before, but um, Greek and Syriac versions read Barak. Okay, so that was the one who like commanded the armies in the time when Deborah was sort of a leader in Israel. But, you know, they didn't really have women leading the armies and such. She was just considered, you know, wise, knowledgeable, and one who could discern the will of God. Barak was the one who was leading the armies, though. Uh, and then Jephthah. No footnote there. Jephthah's just at Jephthah. Footnote at Samuel. Now, the Greek and Syriac versions read Samson, which makes a little more sense. It would be kind of odd if Samuel referred to himself 
in third person. But because of the way Hebrew, especially ancient Hebrew, is... Was? I don't know. <laughs> because of the way ancient Hebrew was written, it, you know, there's a lack of vowels, there's other kind of quirks of the language that make it not totally obvious in some cases what the name might be um just like you know you might get joseph being similar to yeshua or even just joshua so anyway that kind of stuff but the point is they they asked god for help again and God brought the judges to help save them. Anyway, then we get to verse 12. But when you were afraid of Nahash, the king of Ammon, you came to me and said that you wanted a king to reign over you, even though the Lord your God was already your king. All right, here's the king you have chosen. You asked for him, and the Lord has granted your request. Now if you fear and worship the Lord and listen to his voice, and if you do not rebel against the Lord's commands, then both you and your king will show that you recognize the Lord as your God. But if you rebel against the Lord's commands and refuse to listen to him, then his hand will be as heavy upon you as it was upon your ancestors. Okay. So, pretty much just warning them, okay, well, like... Well, first off, saying, all right, y'all wanted a king. Here's your king. He's going to be your leader now. This king being Saul, of course. Um, and then he's kind of giving them a warning that has been repeated a couple of times. When significant leaders have passed the torch. Essentially saying that, okay, if you all follow God and, you know do what he wants, obey his commands, things will be good. But if you don't, it's not going to look pretty. Uh, so then in verse 16, we read, Now stand here and see the great things the Lord is about to do. You know that it does not rain at this time of the year during the wheat harvest. I will ask the Lord to send thunder and rain today. Then you will realize how wicked you have been in asking the Lord for a king. So Samuel called to the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people were terrified of the Lord and Samuel. Pray to the Lord your God for us, or we will die, they, said, they all said to Samuel. For now we have added to our sins by asking for a king. See, all along, Samuel knew that God didn't really want them to have a king, but... They had pretty much asked, even for a while, for a ruler kind of like a king. The Israelites asked for a king. Samuel knew that, like, God was supposed to be their king. He was supposed to be the one who dictates how, you know, the the rules for them to follow, the one who decides where they should go when, when they should attack, retreat, you know, reap, sow, pretty much anything like that. But because the Israelites sort of panicked due to fear of uh, Nahash, the Ammonite king, and the fact that Samson was getting old, along with other prior desires for wanting another ruler like that, they just kind of, they, they asked for a king and both the Lord and Samuel kind of just went along with it. But as a sign that asking for a king was a, a bad move, Samuel here is like, all right, you know that this is not the season for rain, but 
to show you that you've done wrong here by asking for a king, I'm going to ask the Lord for rain and thunder, and it's going to come. And then it does, and the people are like, wait, no, this isn't supposed to happen. And they and they kind of panic in that moment and say, all right, all right, fine. We get it, Samuel. Uh, ask, ask the rain to stop, please. We know we've done something bad here. Uh, so then we get to verse 20. Don't be afraid, Samuel reassured them. You have certainly done wrong, but make sure now that you worship the Lord with all your heart and don't turn your back on him. Don't go back to worshiping worthless idols that cannot help or rescue you. They are totally useless. The Lord will not abandon his people because that would dishonor his great name. For it has pleased the Lord to make you his very own people. As for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you, and I will continue to teach you what is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and faithfully serve him. Think of all the wonderful things he has done for you. But if you continue to sin, you and your king will be swept away. And perhaps the rain coming in was supposed to be symbolic of them getting swept away as well because like if you think about floodwaters sweeping things away uh you know would be a relevant analogy there <laughs> so they're all worried about this rain that's coming down when it's not supposed to and realizing they've made a mistake samuel's like all right don't worry too much god has granted you a king but, like, don't, don't, you know, turn away from the Lord. Because if you do, it'll only get worse. Okay, so Samuel, I think, in all this, has basically stepped down as the main leader of Israel. Uh, I guess he's still kind of, you know religious leader but less so when it comes to other matters like military stuff and those kinds of things but um it looks like Saul is going to take over some some of the things that are maybe not so much areas of expertise for Samuel and things that would be better suited to someone who's a bit younger than Samuel. But anyway, uh, we'll see how all that progresses in the upcoming chapters. But, as always, like and share if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell if you're on YouTube to get updates when I post new videos. If you're seeing this anywhere else, give me a follow or whatever is appropriate for that platform. Um, look down in the description to get info on other social media pages and other places to find and follow me and keep up with the latest of my internet activity. And of course, you can leave comments down below the video with any thoughts you have. So that's going to do it for now. Hope you're all doing well. Hopefully I'll see you soon for another video. But whatever the case is, until next time, stay cool, people.